So let's do introductions first, and then we'll do the words. So Rob, you can go ahead and introduce yourself whenever you want. I'm Rob Tia, and I live in the Isle of Man, and uh, I'm Manx Language Officer for the Isle of Man government. So my job is to organize or work with the teachers who teach Manx language in schools and also the oversee the assessment for it. The Manx language is spoken by maybe just over a thousand people. Um, it's the native language of the Isle of Man. Uh, it has the same roots as Irish in Old Irish, um, uh, but it developed as a separate language over the, at least the last 500 years. Hi, yeah, my name is uh, Denon Herlihy. Um, I'm from Cork, which is the second largest city uh, in the Republic of Ireland. And my CV maybe isn't as impressive as, as Rob's, but uh, I am yeah, a graduate uh, in yeah, the Irish language uh, from University College Cork. Um, I worked with a couple of the societies there as well that preserve the Irish language, like Unchulacht and Uncommon Dromiachta, which are both involved in promoting the Irish through different things. Uh, like Uncommon Dromiachta is a, a drama society. Um, so yeah, a bit of background on Irish. Um, yeah, uh, as as Rob said, yeah, shares roots uh, with Manx and Scottish Gaelic as well. It's a, a Celtic language. Um, so it's yeah been spoken for a very long time on the island of Ireland. Um, but due to kind of historical factors in the last couple of hundred of years, uh, and you know the colonial rule under uh, the British, the Irish language kind of faded away as the language of the people. And today it's spoken uh, natively by um, I would say a few ten thousands of people um, in different parts of the country, uh, particularly concentrated on the west coast. Um, and there, it's an obligatory subject in schools. So I would say, yeah, a good portion of the Irish people have had some experience of learning Irish. Um, but the actual, you know, number of fluent speakers is probably somewhere approaching a um, hundred thousand. Uh, Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I hope that really clarifies it for a lot of people who are watching. Yeah. Um, since I mentioned, I, I have come across people who were not even aware of the languages. So this is great. Yeah. I'm, I'm very excited for this video for that reason. Uh, so we're going to go uh, do the words one by one. So Rob, you're going to start and read the first word. And, and then we'll, at the end, we're just going to do sentences. So you can go ahead and start with the uh, first word. Your first word. Manx word, quag. Okay, quag. Okay. Uh, I guess the equivalent word in Irish would be cuig, um, which is the number five. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First Irish word is traw. Traw. Yeah. Is, I'm guessing, is that produce? Not no. produce, no. Traw. Okay, can I spell it maybe? maybe yeah. Give you a, okay. So it's a T R A, and then you have your fada or base your yeah. your accent on it. Tra. Oh, time. Mm, not not time. Although yeah, there there is a similar word. Um, okay. just T R A, fada T H. Um, oh. No, so tra. Is uh, it beach? Will I reveal it? Yes. Yes. You said it. It, it is beach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. So in Manx, that's yeah. try, try, yeah. So try. Uh, very, okay. very similar, yeah, yeah. Lau, lau. Uh, I'm gonna guess that that means day. Ah, no, day would be okay. la in Manx. I think, yeah. Okay. La Loud. Uh, I can I can give you a hint. Lots of endings in Manx, uh, lots of endings in Irish words, become oo, um, where you would have maybe like an M H sound, like a or a B H sound. Okay, so love, so it's love. Oh, love. Okay, so like hand. Correct. Okay. Okay. So loud. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. Okay. Uh, just yeah, a little point, yeah, because I feel like in Ulster Irish, which is like spoken in like in the north of the country, um, mm. there is that similar thing where the M H or the B H at the end of a word mm. isn't really said like a V, which it would be said say like in like Cork where I'm from, 
it's more like mm-hmm. a wool, so it will become more like low, something yeah. similar to the manga. So it's interesting <laughs> to see like one dialect that looks close, we probably more similar to Manx than than others. Yeah, I, it's quite interesting because lots of uh, people who learn who've, who've learned Manx would just pronounce it as Lao, because they mm-hmm. they um, so it's it's shortened even more, you might say, in kind of modern spoken Manx. But mm-hmm. uh, when we're teaching it, we try and preserve the Lao. Okay, so next one is Alling. 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 Can you give me a clue there, Daniel? Okay, uh, it's an adjective, and it's like a positive oh. adjective. Of course. Okay, that's Ellen. Beautiful. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So Alling. Yeah. Beautiful or yeah. lovely. Yeah, so lots of your or sounds become air in Manx, so L yeah. and yeah, 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 exactly. And like in Ulster Irish, that all kind of becomes more of an ah sound, so Alling. Yeah. yeah, Parton, Parton, Parton. Um, how can I help you? Okay, it's it's um something you would find in the sea. Something you find in the sea. Pattern. Okay, okay, yeah, so like porton, so crab. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. okay. Yeah, as I said, not many words start, start in, with P in Irish, so that, that, that yeah, kind of true me, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's probably true in Manx as well, yeah. To me, Irish sounds very um, uh, correct in pronunciation, if you like. You know, Manx kind of yeah. shortens things and uh, mm. cuts things, yeah. Yeah, more abbreviated, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the third Irish word is Canuck. Ah, uh, okay. I know this word. Um, so in Manx, this is Kronk. And okay. it's a hill, a hill. But we, exactly, have, yeah. some place, we have some place names where um, we've actually dropped the K, so it becomes Knock. Um, but uh, in the standard word for hill is Kronk. So the, the N has changed to a R. <laughs> okay interesting yeah. yeah and what's your plural for that daniel uh so you put so it's c-n-o-c in the singular and the plural is c-n-o-i-c and so it becomes knick for hills okay because ours becomes crink <laughs> okay exactly yeah so similar kind of yeah, mutation yeah 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 okay. well, the fourth one glaishton glaishton Glaston, I'm going to guess, is a car. <laughs> yeah, this is actually, yeah. a, I think it's a loan word from Irish. Um, yeah. It, it's, it's interesting because in, when cars first became a thing, um, they were called in Manx a car glaciach, a moving carriage. Yeah. Um, but somehow we lost the car bit, which would have been much easier. And we kept the glacier bit, but we added a, a funny yeah. ending, Glaston. Yeah, Glaston. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because like, mm. yeah, now you, you, you've got glued on, and yeah, mm. gluish is like, yeah, movement. Yeah. So the pawn, then it's like an ending, I guess, like a moving thing. Um, yeah. Like, like an etlon yeah. is a plane, so etlt is flying, then etlon, a flying thing. Um, yeah. So we have a yeah. Etlon. We get, <laughs> yeah. But it's the same when you have like a, a car in our C A double R. Is like the more modern yes. version, and glued on is maybe slightly older. Yeah. Do you which which would be more popular these days? I would definitely feel like car is more popular. I, I feel yeah. like you know, obviously, you get some people who like be kind of purists about it and say glued on, but you kind yeah. of like to say like an and like an automobile or a motor car maybe in English. It might feel a little bit, yeah. you know. Well, uh, I, yeah. I did a bit of research on this. So in in. Um, about 100 years ago, or more than 120 years ago, they were calling it a car motor um, mm-hmm. or a car glacier. But um, so the word glacier is not that old in Manx, um, mm-hmm. but it's, it's quite a popular word. I can't see that it's going to be replaced by car, but, um, but car is our old word for a carriage. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, so this is two words technically. So it's uh, mm-hmm. law ma. Law ma, law ma. Is yeah. Is this good day by any chance? 
It is, yeah, good day. Exactly, yeah. So law yeah. for day and a ma for good, yeah. So in Manx, that would be la mai. Okay. <laughs> and how, how strong is that Ulster dialect these days? I mean, you know, I've I definitely met met people like my age who would still be be quite strong on it. Um, now this is kind of people maybe who were who had come to study in Cork and maybe probably huh. modified some of it. But like, it definitely you can there there is a noticeable difference. Now it does get yeah. like you know leveled out over time when you get there's more, you know, kind of national organisations now. You have like you know a national TV station and a national radio yeah, station yeah. in Irish. Yeah. So you get much yeah. more dialect mixing, which you didn't get like fifty years ago. They were like more right. they're like separate entities, right. you know. Yeah, um yeah. but I would still say, yeah, definitely like there there still is um strong kind of like dialect communities uh up, yeah. up and down kind of the west coast. Yeah. I've been been to Belfast and just spoken in Manx and people understood me. Um mm -hmm. but uh I've gotta say if I'm listening to any if I'm watching RTE um mm -hmm. Uh, TG Kahara or something like that. I I need the subtitles. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, um, no, definitely, yeah. Like if if you came to Cork and you were speaking Manx, I think it would be a little bit more difficult than it would be in Belfast. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See next Manx one number five. Yeast. Yeast. Mm. Yeast. Uh, I'm gonna say that's Jesus. No, no, Jesus is Yeezer. Yeezer, okay. <laughs> yeast. Yes. Yeast. Um, there's a there's yeast. A yeast. Yeah. Yeast. Um, probably not the thing that gets involved in making bread. Um, no. I'm gonna say no. no. Uh, I'm gonna say maybe a, a fish. Yes. A fish. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. eesk. Yeah. Eesk. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeast. Yeah. And actually, interesting connection between Canada and the Irish language um, that involves fish. Uh, so there's only one place outside of Britain and Ireland that has a unique place name in Irish that isn't based off, you know, the, the standard place name. Uh, and that's Newfoundland. It's called uh, Tal of Nehesk in Irish, which oh. means land of the fish. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a strong, you know, Irish connection. Um, between Ireland, you know, strong connection between Ireland and Newfoundland, and uh, yeah, so strong that it, it it has its own name in Irish. Well, the the English accent in Newfoundland sounds Irish, doesn't it? You know. Well, yeah, the, the accent in, in Newfoundland is so different from the rest of Canada that sometimes people mm. just think of it as a different language, like <laughs> <laughs> because they, we can't really understand them sometimes, right? Uh, especially okay. when, when, like, I, I have a lot of friends from Newfoundland because I work with them. And when they, when we are talking, like, the conversation is fine. But when they're speaking among each other uh, mm. and you're listening to it, sometimes you're like, well, that, that does not sound like English. But I know, always, I always found they spoke very good English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, maybe, maybe that they are, but it's just for the rest of Canada. Uh, yeah, yeah. When when we're when we're listening to it, it sounds like okay. This is this sounds so different. <laughs> I just always wondered what uh, the Newfoundland English mm. in Canada sounds like to people in in Ireland or the UK compared to the yeah. rest of Canada. No, it, they they sound just to me. I I thought they were Irish. Yeah, I definitely see similarities. I couldn't, I couldn't place. Yeah, I couldn't place where in Ireland, but. Um, I mean, they weren't from North Dublin, but they were, they were definitely, definitely sounded more Irish than Canadian. You're Somewhere back, on the right? island. The next Irish one is Cahar. Cahar. Um, no. I'm guessing that this means city. Uh, it is close. There are a couple of different words that sound the same here. And you, yeah. Um, okay. Maybe not yeah. then. Okay. So yeah, no, it, it's a word that sounds quite similar. Yeah, is city. Okay. Is it instead actually the number four? It is the number four exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Give her a cahar, number four. Yeah. So number number four in Manx is care. Okay. Care. So again, yeah, abbreviated as you said. Yeah. 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 The word for city, how is that different? Is that? Uh, is kahar rather than kahar. So it's an aw oh, rather okay. than an ah. 
okay yeah yeah uh, i yeah. i've only i've noticed that um because i think they have something similar in welsh right mm -hmm. and, and things but um we don't have that word at all you see because we don't have any cities well <laughs> You know, not not <laughs> well, yeah, big Douglas, city, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess just the point on the Irish counting system. I'm not sure how it is in Manx, but like Irish has yeah. three different number fours technically, depending on what you're doing with the number. So Cahar is like Iver Cahar, so the number four. So if you're just counting yeah. on your fingers or yeah. something. But if you're counting items, yeah. so if you want to say yeah. like four books, it would be Cara Lower. Um, so that's oh, a different okay. four, and if you talk about so four that people, sounds, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, so that sounds very like the Manx, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's that's closer, yeah, yeah. and then four people yeah. is Cahar. Um, so it's just kind of its own word, so you don't say four people as two separate words, it's just a, a single right. word by itself. Um, so there's three different ways of saying four depending on what you're, you're we, talking we, about. We only have. Yeah, we on, we only have that word for like a a number word for a number of people for the number three, which is truer, three people. Yeah, but we don't Same in Irish, right? we don't really have a, yeah past past three. We, we we just use the number and the mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, mother. Uh, I mean, it sounds like in, in the English word. I'm guessing it sounds like the Irish word. I'm gonna say it's. Hmm. Actually, you know, it could be a couple of different things. Could you repeat it? Mother. I mean, yeah, it could be, it could be mother, like mother, or it could be dog, like madre. I'm just not sure which one. Yeah, you were right second time, dog. Yeah. Second time, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say mother straight away. I was like, you know, it's risky in case it's dog, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so how do you say that in Irish? So, uh, dog is well. The standard Irish is is madre. Um, yeah. But you also have like Maddy as like uh, like more of a dialectical form, and you also have um, yeah, you also have like uh, Geyer as well as like an older as an older form for dog or or coo as well for a hound. Yeah, coo, yeah. coo's a hound in Manx. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So our so mother the the plural is Maddy, and the mm. the the genitive, but um, yeah, it's it's the D is very soft in Manx. Um, mm -hmm. in, in the middle of the word there. So it's a moda, moda. Okay, so the final word is sail. Is that the world? It can be the world, yeah, sail. Um, life, life. Our life, yeah. exactly, yeah. It's, quite, it's kind of a broad yeah. one in Irish, yeah. And yeah. I guess maybe in Manx yeah. too, yeah. Yeah, usually it's very rare that we find it for life. And in Manx, it normally means world. But mm. exactly the same, same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same word. Yeah, they probably spell, you probably spell it a strange way in Ireland, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> depends who you ask. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay, so are you ready for a Manx sentence? Yeah, I'm ready for a whole Manx sentence. I mean, I have six more words than when I started today, so you know what I am ready. <laughs> you you've got more words. No, oh, six okay, more words yeah. than you had. I got six oh, yeah, more yeah, words yeah. since yeah since since four o'clock. Yeah. Okay, right. So it's a question, all right? Okay. Nelia Banya na Ustia. Would you like m Would you like milk or water? Yeah, Nelia Banya na Ustia. Yeah. Would you like milk or water? Perfect. <laughs> good, okay. Very good. <laughs> Okay. Let's see how Rob you do with uh, with his sentence. I'm a bit disappointed that was so easy for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, maybe you should have come up with something. Maybe I don't know. So it's some, something more elaborate. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So so my my sentence, and it's going to feature one of the other words we've had already. Um, okay. So um, ta ganav le foil Aaron tra. Ta ganav. Yeah, le foil Aaron Straw. There's something on the beach, and I don't know mm. what this ganav is. Yeah. Is it a type of fish? It isn't a type of fish, but it is. It is something you'll always well you'll find on most beaches. Oh, genyach sand. 
Exactly, yeah, that's it, yeah. So, so there, there's sand to be found at the beach. Yeah, did you say Genyach Galia, plenty of sand? Uh, well, I said Ganyak Galia, it's like there's sand to be found, or there, there is sand uh, there at the beach, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. It's quite interesting. I'm now thinking I'll have to learn a bit more, you know. <laughs> and and I guess the same for me too. But I guess, yeah, whenever I've seen Manx, it's like, it is kind of like someone's taken Irish and just kind of just put it through a different lens in terms of the spelling. Yeah. Just like, yeah, yeah. you know, it's just like, it, it's it's the same idea, but you just kind of approached it in a different way. Um, and well, yeah, maybe, maybe just kind of spell out the process. I think, you know, with Irish spelling, you, you're you've got a national language spoken in many dialects so your focus is on the etymology right on, yeah. on, on meaning um, with Manx it was really written down for English speakers uh, for, for English speaking priests who couldn't speak Manx um, mm -hmm. so it, it's based much more closely to English than anything else um, mm -hmm. but it, but the good thing about it is that it preserves um the the manx pronunciation very well um well it could have been better but it's not bad you know one of the things that i really love about this video is bringing more attention to uh two languages mm -hmm. that are not often discussed because you go on other language mm -hmm. channels and you always see the the, the well-known languages or the more popular languages but yeah. i think it's very nice yeah. to focus yeah. on on uh, languages such as Manx and Irish, because yeah. sometimes they yeah. are just forgotten. Well, in history as well, Irish had a very significant role, like in mm. kind of the dark, you know, dark ages, the role of Irish, like priests and missionaries and kind of Absolutely. keeping like yeah. literature alive. And like Irish is one of the first languages in Europe to be written down, like along with Latin and ancient Greek at a time when say like, you know, English and French and German were still kind of forming. Uh, Irish was kind of actually, in a you know an early stage of like creative production through monks um so it has a very long a written history uh, longer than a lot of other languages but uh yeah just over time yeah it's kind of been i guess kind of slowly kind of forgotten about and i guess manx the story of manx as well is a great story in terms of the revitalization of it i think a lot a lot more people should know that story yeah because manx was almost universally spoken or understood at least um, by the the average the ordinary people in the Isle of Man right up until the 1860s and after that it started to dwindle and maybe the younger people didn't keep it going and were encouraged to speak English and so right uh, maybe the first world war was a watershed moment for Manx um, and after that by the time you get to the 1950s and 60s it's a handful of speakers um, but I think kind of inspired by the Irish and the Welsh in particular um, and seeing that, you know, understanding what had been lost, um, people have come back to it, you know, and, and, and appreciate how much it, it you know, the, the, the cultural value of a language is just, um, there's nothing comparable, you know. Thank you so much. Uh, this was really wonderful. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, it's been it's been really interesting and, and really worthwhile. Yeah. No, it's always worth putting a spotlight on, as you said, like languages that are kind of minority languages um, and maybe uh, don't get as much um, coverage. And uh, yeah, just kind of like languages that are kind of on the fringes. Um, it is mm. nice to kind of bring it to an audience. And as you said, like, you know, that people might think that in Ireland and the Isle of Man, we just kind of just speak English with a different accent um, and that are not like distinct languages from a distinct language family. Um, mm. So yeah, I think it is, it is good to actually um, show that to people. Absolutely. Yeah. I completely agree. And uh, again, just want to thank you for that. Okay. All the Perfect. Best. Okay. Thanks. Take care, guys. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.